Hello friends, in this video we will explore Cellranger. This is one of the tool developed by Tenex Genomics company to process the single cell sequencing data. Okay, so we will see this in this video. So, so far what we have learned. So we talked about the difference between bulk versus single cell technology. Then we explore different applications of this field, single cell technology. Then most importantly, we talked in detail about how the single cell technology works. And also we talked about different challenges with respect to the single cell data. Okay. So in this video, what we are going to learn is like what we can do with cell rangers. Okay. And the different sub commands of the cell ranger tool and the algorithm overview. Here we will talk in detail about how actually cell ranger works, you know, the algorithm behind the cell ranger, and then we will do the end saw. So this video might be a little lengthy, so that's where I thought you know to split the topic into two parts. So in this video, we will talk mainly towards the theory part of the cell ranger to explore how cell ranger works, and then in the next video, we will do the actual hands-on, you know, using cell ranger. So let's get started. So this is what uh, the single cell technology, the workflow, like first step is like you prepare your sample that means dissociate the tissue to different cells, then you capture the cells, then in the next step, stage we prepare the RNA, okay, so we attach the cell barcode, we attach the UMI, so once our samples are prepared, then we go for sequencing. So once the sequencing happens, then we process the raw data. So here we do the cell demultiplexing followed by the UMI deduplication and then aligning the reads against the reference genome. Then we do the quantification and finally we get a count matrix where each column contains uh, represents the cells while each row represents the genes and the count represents the number of UMI supporting that gene in that particular cell. So this process you know starting from the raw data to this count data is actually generated by is actually done by the cell ranger tool so once we have the count data in the next step we use any downstream tool like sudor for the data analysis so in this video we will mainly focus on how this cell ranger works so each of these steps we will talk in detail so coming to give you an overflow of, overview of the workflow so once we do the sequencing right so what we will get, let's say we do the sequencing from Illumina sequencing, we get a BCL file. So these are the raw files. So in the first step, we need to convert these raw files to first few format. So Cell Ranger provides a tool, okay, called MK first queue, which can be used to convert the BCL files to first few files. So we can also use Illumina's inbuilt, you know, the BCL to first queue tool as well. So whatever tool we use, whether BCL to first queue or the MK first queue, we need to first convert the BCL file to first queue format. So now you know about the first queue format. So once you have the first queue format, then directly we can use the count command to convert the first queue to read count data. So the read count data will look like this, where each cell and each gene, how many UMI are supporting. So you see there are three information available in this matrix. First, we need to know about the cell information or the barcode information so that information is stored in this barcode.tsv file okay so we also need the feature information right the, we need to know what is this feature which gene it represents where it is you know locating like that so these information are stored in the feature file and third the actual count data which talks about how many reads are supporting that gene in that particular cell that is stored in this matrix.mtx file. So we will talk about the format of this file, you know, in later slides. But yeah, so this is the ultimate data what you get after this count step. That means the barcode information, the feature information, and finally the matrix. So once you get these three files, this data can be submitted to any downstream tool. Let's say student can pay, you know, for further downstream analysis. So in this video, we will talk more about this count you know tool or count command where to convert the first queue to the read count data so apart from this count as i said and mk first queue there is one more command uh, in their cell ranger which is aggregation 
so for example mk first q is for bcl to first q count is for first q to count but this is for single sample analysis while aggregation is used to do for you know aggregate the multiple count data okay so we'll talk about that so apart from that you have you know many components as well you know so like multi like the different components are there so we can use any other components but we will primarily focus on the count command so now let's talk how cell ranger works the basic algorithm overview this is very important because any tool you use you should know about how that tool works so that you can tune fine tune its you know parameters okay so this is the workflow that is uh, you know uh, used by the cell ranger so we'll talk about that so let's say once you start with all reads so first what cell ranger does is like it tries to do the barcode correction and filtering so basically any reads which is associated with an invalid cell barcode will be discarded so how cell ranger knows that a barcode is invalid so what it does like it has a master list of barcode because the they have the master list or we can call the barcode white list so in the first step what it does it checks the barcode whether that barcode belonging to or present in that white list or not if it is present then yes it's a valid barcode so in this case so it will be included in the umi comp but if that barcode is not present in the white list then it checks how uh, it compares that in you know, our sample barcode with this and if there is one mismatch then it will be next sorry if it is more than you know one mismatch then it will simply discard it it will say that no this barcode is not a valid barcode it is invalid one but if by chance you know one mismatch is there with compared to this whitelist barcode anywhere any of the barcode if there is one mismatch is there then cell ranger will try to you know infer or try to see whether that mistake is actually due to the sequencing error or it is actually an invalid barcode or something like that so so it checks whether barcode is eligible for correction or not okay so main important can i correct it so that's what cell ranger tries okay and if there is a probability that you know it is very different from the you know white list due to sequencing error and it cannot correct it then it will simply discard it but if there is a chance of correction is there and it 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 will correctly guess the correct barcode then in that case it corrects it then it includes in the umi count okay so you can read more about this in this you know about uh, this in the you know genomics website only so this is the first step like you know uh, once we have all the reads the all the reads having invalid barcode will be discarded so good so we got now the valid barcode so everything is fine at the cell level we have now good got the good barcodes so now cell ranger will do the reference mapping so basically what it does like you know it will align all the reads now against the reference genome okay so and very important since uh, you know transcript is splicing has happened so we have to use a splice ever aligner splice ever aligner like star okay this is the uh, cell ranger uses star to align against the reference genome and this star is a splice ever aligner means it understand the splicing event that means exon intron that it understand okay so uh, and after it aligns it then uses the gtf annotation file that means gene annotation file to annotate the alignment whether the read is an exonic read or an intronic read or antisense read like that so exonic reads means those reads which lie in the exonic region intronic reads lie in the intronic region and one more thing like intergenic reads are also there that means those gene lies in the intergenic region that means they lie in between the genes and also it will try to annotate the read as antisense read so what does it mean it is like if a gene is in the positive strand but the read aligned in the negative strand or just the opposite if the gene is in the negative strand but uh, you know your uh, read is aligned on the positive strand such reads are called as you know antisense read so this is what in the next step what it does like it tries to map your all the reads against the reference genome so then it will discard any reads which are unmapped okay because they did not map so we have to discard it so in the next also any 
reads with mapping quality less than 255. Now, this is the criteria it uses. So, any reads which are having very, very low mapping quality, where we are not confident, so those will be discarded. So, after, you know, discarding these, you know, reads, so finally, we get the confidently mapped reads. So, in the next step, what it does, it removes the intergenic reads, okay, and then it includes all, uh, you know, uh, reads. Let also one more important thing like here, you see, we it includes the exonic and intronic reads by default. But if you want, do not want intronic reads to be included, so we can use this intron, include intron is equal to false parameter while running the count command. So in this case, the intronic reads will also be discarded by cell ranger. But by default, both exonic and intronic reads are included in the downstream analysis. So then also it, it removes, uh, it excludes the antisense reads. Okay, these antisense reads will be discarded and any reads mapping to more than one gene. So these are multi-mapped genes will also be discarded because in this case, one will be primary, one will be secondary. So uh, cell ranger discards such, you know, uh, multiple mapping genes, uh, sorry, reads. So now uh, we very good. So, so far we got good barcode, then we got good reads. That means which is confidently mapped reads. So in the next step, what cell ranger does is, you know, it has to count it, right? How many UMIs are supporting in the gene? Okay, so now we got this alignment, right? So we know which reads are aligning against a which gene. So now we can simply count it in the next step. But there is a catch because now the UMI is involved. So uh, again, due to the sequencing uh, issues, UMI also get, you know, corrupted. Okay, so that's where it first, it needs to, uh, you know, filter the UMIs. Okay, so where, uh, in the what it does, like it uh, removes the UMI with homopolymers. Okay, like, a, 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 T, 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 like this homopolymers, if it is very high number, so that means where the sequencing, you know, can go wrong. So that's where uh, it, it will remove uh, uh, UMIs with, you know, homopolymers. Also, any N, is means ambiguous bases are there in the homopolymer, those UMIs will also be discarded from the analysis. Then, any UMIs containing bases with quality less than 10, that means these are very, very poor quality bases are there, so those will also be discarded. So, so far good. So we now finally got a good UMI and it maps to, you know, a unique gene and, and the barcode is also correct. So all this combination barcode, UMI and gene level, everything is perfect. Now in the next step, what it does, you know, it removes, uh, you know, duplicate molecules. So now it will do the, you know, UMI deduplication. It will, and then finally it will count the UMIs. Okay, so now we got the count data. Basically, now we got for every cell, not which let's not call cell for now, for every droplet, okay, for every drops, uh, drops, how many UMIs are detected? So now we got now uh, gene by drop metric. Okay, it's not cell yet because in the next step, it will now do the cell calling algorithm. So what does it mean now? So now we see in the droplet based method we collect drops right and i have already explained you know that in the drops ideally one cell you might get okay and sometimes you do not get cell but instead you can catch an empties like that okay so that way uh, sometimes um, you know uh, you will get umis in the drop but it may not be cell so we have to differentiate the cell from the background okay so this is where the cell calling algorithm works okay so if a drop has higher number of UMIs, but it may not be cell. So not all droplets are cell. So now what logic cell ranger use is that cell ranger uses the gene expression profile, okay, to decide whether a drop is a cell or not. Because ideally for a cell to survive, it has to express some set of genes, okay. Though there is a profile in it, right? So that expression profile has to be there. And based on that logic, it tries to do, you know, cell calling. So that's where you will see that now some drops will be called as cell, but some drops will be called as background. So we have two, uh, you know, cases, two uh, things are here or two objects are there. One is the cell and one is the background. Then it tries to differentiate. So there will be a strict boundary between these two, you know, the cells versus, you know, background. 
so with that logic it creates you know the cell calling algorithm okay so that's uh, i think uh, the overview of the cell ranger okay so to just quickly summarize uh, reads valid barcodes then you can map it select the confidently mapped reads then remove all antisense reads etc then do the umi correction then umi duplication and finally the cell calling so now perfect we got the count matrix ultimately by the uh, cell ranger so now let's see different flavor of cell ranger workflow that we can use so first is a straightforward where we have the single sample basically let's say this is one sample one gem one one flow cell mode of workflow so basically let's say we have one sample you extract the sample and put in a gem well this is the chromium chip and each is a well so where all the reaction can happen so you take the sample put it in a single gem well then extract the library and then sequence it in a single uh, you know sequencer so we get one bcl file then we use the mk fast queue to convert the bcl to fast queue and then then use the count command to convert the fast queue to output so this is a straightforward single workflow okay now the second case where let's say hypothetically we want you want we want to increase the depth of our sequence so we re realized that you know uh, sequencing depth is not sufficient for this experiment we need more sequence data so in this case what we can do let's say we take one sample we load it into one gem well and we extract the library but in, and we put you know the the uh, put them into two sequences okay so that we get more sequence so now we get two bcl files you can we convert the mk fast queue we get now two fast queue file but now while running count we have to pull all the fast queue together so we have to provide all the fast queues together to the count so the count will understand that okay these are not different sample but these are part of one sample but it has run on different sequences so there will be one count command but multiple fast queue files can be provided to the count so now the third case let's say we want to do is for replicates we want to study the replicate okay sample is one but we want to rep do the replications okay in that case what we can do we can take that sample we load into multiple uh, gem well so now in this example let's say we have two gem well we have loaded our sample we have prepared the library separately and we can sequence them together so now the barcodes of this will be different from the barcodes of this so that's where we can sequence them together when we get now one bcl file we get now when we do the mk first queue it will be split based on the barcode and we'll get two first queue files so one belonging to each replicates so now since they are different right they are replicates we cannot merge them we cannot pull them we have to run separately the count command so count of this sample uh, this replicate and count of this replicate should be run uh, differently so now we have two count command in this case for two replicates and once we have the count then we can actually merge them or aggregate them so we can use this aggregation command to do the aggregation and finally we get one single matrix of all the uh, replicates here so that means some cells from the replicate one some cells will be from the replicate two will get in, merged into one single you know uh, matrix kind of thing okay so last case is like we have multiple samples now so so we can run the same way we have two sample in this example we run in you know, either two chip we use okay and we run through uh, and uh, either we can use two chip or in the same chip we can load it to different gem wells we obtain the library we can sequence them together again we get you know mk fast queue two fast queue files and we can aggregate them using aggregation and finally we get the output so these are the different flavor of uh, you know cell ranger workflow that we can use most uh, you know most uh, used one is either this one or you know this one okay so i think that's all about the cell ranger overview um, so how cell ranger works so in the next video we will do actually the handshot so we'll download the cell ranger we'll take a queue, you know test data set and we will run and we'll explore each and input file output file everything in details so see you in next video i hope uh, this video uh, was useful and uh, you know and yes please uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not yet and uh, share this video among your network okay so good see you in next video bye bye